Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Quentage, the show where we talk about interesting decks and cards to play around with. And what a collection we just received, because the uh, Forbidden Treasures have arrived. There's a, a bunch of new cards, all of them with even crazier effects than the last. And uh, there's going to be a few of them that we're going to be using in today's deck. Because today we're going into Northern Realms featuring one of the new additions. But it's basically a deck that I've been working on for two months already. Uh, the first idea for this deck came about, I think, in January, February, when we were talking in Team Elderblood about making some meme decks that were uh, specifically focused in Northern Realms, where we draw a lot of cards and try to work uh, something out with Istred and with Snowdrop. That never really came to fruition. I had this deck in my deck building for a while, but now there has been a very, very cool addition to Northern Realms that was basically tailor-made for this deck. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Draw Madness deck. So Draw Madness um, is a deck that focuses on, as the title uh, already kind of signifies, uh, drawing and putting cards back into your deck as much as possible. There's a few cards in particular that are focusing on this. Uh, but of course the new Traveling Priestess card is very, very powerful in that regard as well. We'll talk about her in a minute, but aside from that we have Istred, as I said, we have the new Muta Generator card as well, um, Snowdrop, Dandelion, and then of course the Sunset Wanderers along with Erland to boost everything in your deck. Um, you could play this deck with Pincer Maneuver, but I've decided to have a bit of tempo in this deck to go for Inspired Seal, to get Raffred's Vengeance going, to get Dandelion going, and to just protect something small. Pincer Maneuver would be good for more consistency, but there's so many options to draw cards with this deck that you should always grab the cards that you can. Another peculiar card in this deck is Cohen, where we'll basically Cohen is going to be our end play. Um, there's a few options with the Priestess, but Cohen is the juiciest one for me, so we're going with that. So, this is the entire list, you can find it in the Play Gwent website using the link in the description down below as well. Um, but before we go into example matches, we're going to go through each and every card one by one. If you're not interested in that, as always, you can use the timeline down below to skip to those example matches. But to those of you still here, let's go through all these cards. Um, the main reason why there's so many 4 Revision Bronzes in this deck is Muta Generator. We'll be talking about that in a minute, but I'll try to do this as structured as possible as always. The Redanian Knight starts at 2 power and 2 armor, and as long as you are armor, and you're on the ranged row, you um, will boost yourself by one. So this unit will boost itself by one. If it is hit enough that it loses the armor, it will move itself to the melee row and then damage the highest power enemy unit by two. So basically giving you um, four points if it doesn't die and then one point every single turn. Um, pretty good engine card, uh, which has a little bit of protection as well and just can grow along the round. Then we have the Traveling Priestess, the new Bronze Northern Realms edition. 3 power for 4 provisions, has Veil and has an order ability where she can boost an allied unit by 1 for every charge that she has. She also has Zeal so she can use that order ability immediately. Now the peculiar thing that on, is that on deploy she gains zero charges. She also starts with zero charges, but whenever this unit is put back into your deck, you increase the number of charges on this card by three. So put her back into your deck twice, which counts in the mulligan phase as well. She will gain six charges when you actually use her, giving you already nine points for four. And of course those boosts are uh, very useful because we're going to be using those in a minute as well. Then double Rad of its Royal Guard, very simple card with formation. So if you put him on the melee row, uh, he will gain zeal. If you put him on the range row, he will boost himself by one, but not have zeal. So starts at three power. And the order ability allows you to uh, boost an allied unit by two. And if he is boosted, you also give that unit to armors if the royal guards are boosted. So simple for provision card. Now we have, I think, a single Kedwenny Sergeant, uh, another three power card with formation and an order ability where you boost an allied unit by one with two charges. Again, something that we'll be uh, using uh, 
uh, taking advantage of, of those extra charges. Then a single Centurion Envoy. Centurion Envoy is very handy to give us an option to put cards on top of our deck uh, in an effort to try and get the cards that we want. So Formation again starts at 4 power and has a 2 turn cooldown for her order ability where you look at 3 random cards from your deck and you move 1 to the top of it. You also do, are not forced, so you may move one to the top of it. Um, gonna come into hand and in, into a lot of uses uh, in a minute. Um, and there's hedgehogs on this card. Now we have the Cat Wenny Knight, also a single one in this deck, four power for four provisions. And when you play or summon this card from the deck, uh, you boost this card by three. So if you use Amphibious Assault to get this card out of the deck, uh, you will boost it by 5 for uh, Amphibious Assault and then another 3, making this 12 points in total if you just pull him with Amphibious Assault, which is really, really good. And then a Double Tritum Infantry card. This card will damage a random enemy unit by 1 every time it is boosted. That's why we have a lot of units that also can apply boosts. Um, this card starts at 4 power and just doubles up on your boost potential. So every boost is now worth uh, 2 points instead of just 1. Then a single Griffin Witcher Ranger starts at 2 power for 5 provision, also has formation. And on deploy he boosts himself by 1 for every unit on a selected enemy row, so up to 9. And on order you can actually transfer those boosts from self to an allied unit, which could also be very, very interesting if played correctly. Because um, this means that you can boost something else to a certain level and that is going to come into its own when we play Cohen. Then double Griffin Witcher Mentors, um, a very handy card to also draw a unit and then shuffle a card from your hand back. So that's where that archetype is showing its true colors. So if you pull one of the priestesses, you can put her back in the, into the deck and she will gain another three charges for when you actually play her. At Adrenaline 4, you also boost the unit you've drawn by 2, which could uh, just make the difference as well. And we're really focused on uh, boosting units in the deck as well with this uh, deck specifically. Then Cohen, another Witcher, starts at 3 power for 6 provisions, can definitely be bricked, um, but his order ability is where the magic happens. So on order, you boost all allied units with power equal to Cohen by the amount of boosts on Cohen. So if you can boost Cohen in the deck, then you have some preparation going for later on, because when you use him, he will just boost everybody else by the amount he is boosted if you can match all those powers. And that's where the Priestess's uh, ability comes in as well, because you can fine-tune whichever unit gets those boosts. Now, for example, if you put Cohen to 6 and you have 3 other units that are uh, up to 6, you gain 9 extra points from Cohen's order ability, because he will boost those 3 units by 3 each, the amount that he is boosted. The higher Cohen goes, the higher those boosts will go as well. But of course, it's going to be more difficult to put all those units at the same level. Next up is Istred. Istred starts at 6 power for 6 provisions, has patience, so the value of his order ability will be increased at the end of every one of your turns and on order you draw up to the value of his patients uh, the number of cards that that entails and then shuffle the same number of cards back to your deck with him on the board you also boost every unit card that you draw by one and if it's not a unit you boost Istred by one so that also counts when he's not using his order ability which is very important later on so again a card that also boosts units uh, in your deck technically because you can shuffle those back in uh, and he can be quite, quite effective, especially in combination with a card that we'll be talking about in a minute. Then the Muta Generator, one of our new artifact cards, or one of our forbidden treasures. Six provisions for basically nothing at the start. So when you play this card, nothing happens, but from that point onwards, whenever you play a unit on your melee row, you boost five random units on your side of the battlefield with the same provision cost by a one, including the card that you place, so you will get at least one boost if you do that. But this is the card why we, the reason why we have that many four provision cards in our deck. So whenever you play a unit on your ranged row, you boost five random units in your deck with the same provision cost by a one. So this card can very quickly boost every or a lot of cards in your deck by a one continuously play this card in round one and your deck will be filled to the brim with green green colored numbers which is very very cool to see in action then we have surrender surrender i basically added to counteract dwarves a little bit dwarves have been completely overtuned i'm probably not even going to be doing a deck guide on those guys because they're just 
Pretty easy to make a deck around as well. Just put every single card that they buffed into a deck and you'll do fine on the ladder. But surrender basically counters dwarves because for seven provisions you can remove uh, all armor, well not armor, all armor, two armor from all units on a row and damage them by two. So a lacerate that also removes armor on dwarves that can basically get rid of an entire row of tokens. So that is very, very powerful indeed. Then we have Snowdrop. So this is the card that works perfectly in tandem with Istret. Two power for eight provisions and on order you draw up to two cards and then shuffle the same number of cards back to your deck. Whenever you draw a card with this card on the board, you boost her by two. So if you play Istret first, let his patience go up and then play Snowdrop, you can uh, immediately get some benefit from Istret. Snowdrop will go to six and you will have also shuffled two cards back into your deck. And then if you use Istret, Snowdrop will continue to boost herself by the amount of cards that Istret draws. Including also all the other ways that we can draw cards. So the uh, Griffin Witcher Mentor is one of those as well. And we're still not done uh, in uh, actually drawing cards. So uh, definitely a very powerful card in this deck. Then we have Dandelion. Dandelion is um, not really the crux of this deck, but can actually give you a lot of points. So six power for nine provisions. And on order, you boost a unit, whatever unit you want to select, in your deck by two. And he can do that every two turns. On Inspired, so if he is boosted at the end of your turn, you boost the top unit in your deck by one. Especially at the beginning of a match, you can also see which card is on top of your deck uh, because of that. Because you can check your deck, see which card is boosted, and you'll know that, okay, that's the card that's on top of my deck, because Dandelion has just boosted it. Um, one of the reasons why I went for Inspired Zeal, because you can immediately add two more points to your deck, and of course also guarantee that one tick... Um, at the end of your turn. Um, so very, very powerful card indeed. Then Donimir, we need some defense for those engine cards that we're playing. There's a few crucial cards that we, that we really need to stay, keep alive. So Donimir is definitely powerful enough to do that as a defender. So we can block targeted attacks on a row. Seven power, two armor and a shield. So still the most protected defender of them all. Uh, Donimir is uh, yeah the, the, the defender of uh, Sodden. So that's... Uh, yeah, very cool night indeed. Then of course, Rafford's Vengeance. I think there are barely any um, Northern Realms decks that are, that are built without this card. Still very powerful, five power for 10 provisions and on order you play a bronze unit from your hand and then draw a card. Again, you draw a card, very possibly useful indeed, with a cooldown of five. So without any winches, you could definitely add a winch to this deck to uh, boost it a little bit, but without any winches, you will only be able to use this card twice in a single round, but even then, it's very, very useful. It also still has the crew ability where whenever you play a unit next to this card, you damage a random enemy unit by two, including if you uh, play a mage right next to it. So that's also the crew ability. So it needs to be either a mage or a soldier on both sides of this card. So uh, yeah, still very good to get some tempo going. Then Geralt Erden, I think the same reason applies here. Uh, this is just a defense against dwarves. Um, and against Mill as well, because this can reset an, uh, a Colgrim just in one go. So 2 power and 11 provisions for a, a very nice deployability where you reset the power of all units in a row. Um, just like that. So all the green and red numbers will disappear back to their original state. Uh, kind of like a prerequisite at the moment. There's so many dwarves on the ladder that you'll definitely need this card. Here we have Erland. Erland is our big, big finisher. So four power for 12 provisions. And I say finisher, uh, even though you generally don't use this card as a finisher, but in our case, we will. So uh, on deploy, you boost all units in your deck by one. And if you're at Adrenaline 3, he also gains immunity, so cannot be targeted. Um, on order, you remove boosts from all units in your deck and then boost this unit by the same amount. That is why this card is the finisher of this deck, because any remaining boost that you have collected in your deck over the course of the match can be gathered up by Erlen, so you don't miss a single point in the entire match, which is uh, very valuable indeed. Um, if you need to use them earlier, that is still an option, but do keep in mind that you lose then the boost that you use later on. Um, but very powerful card. Then Sunset Wanderers is another way that we can draw an extra card. And this deck just plays perfectly into this card. Starts at 1 power for 13 provisions. Starts in your leftmost position in your hand. And at the beginning of your turn, while it's still in hand, you move this card to the next position to the right and boost itself by 1. 
If at the end of your turn you have not passed and it's the rightmost card in your hand, he will put himself, well, they will put themselves on the uh, a random row and then you will draw another card. So synchronizes with that, we can keep this card to the left as much as possible because we have a lot of ways to draw extra cards to the right side of our hand. Um, and then whenever we need to, this is just a big point slam where we don't need to play any cards. So very, very good card in this deck. And then for a bit of consistency, we have Amphibious Assault, the Echo card for Northern Realms, where we play a Northern Realms unit from our deck with a provision cost of 9 or less, and you boost it by 1 for each provision below the limit. 9 times out of 10, this is going to be used on a 4 provision card just to get the Muta Generator going. The Catwany Knight is a good option, um, and any of the Oldics um, might also be very powerful. Getting another Priestess out of the deck, for example, is also definitely an option. And if you're looking for the higher ranges, uh, we could get Cohen out, which will be boosted by 3. And then, of course, Dandelion is also a good target if you want to get him out as soon as possible. Another uh, stratagem is just a Crystal Skull, where we boost an allied unit by 4 and give it Veil. And then Inspired Zeal, or the ability where we can give Zeal to a unit um, 3 times and boost it by 2 as well. Um, Going to be used on Raffert's Vengeance, Dandelion and something of your choice. Um, usually I use the last charge to get um, Cohen into a good position as well, boosting wise. Um, so definitely going to be coming in handy. And that's it. Uh, let's see how this card, uh, well, this deck works out in practice, because it is really, really fun on top of it being usually pretty powerful as well. Let's show it off. So first up we have Soldiers. Hmm. An Imperial Formation Nilfgaard deck, that might be very interesting. Uh, we get the Muta Generator in round one, which is really good. I'm gonna kick Erden for now, because um, I want to have as many low provision bronzes in my hand as possible. Erland is always nice to have. I'm gonna kick the Griffin Witcher Mentor for now, and we get Surrender, okay. We can start building up the boosts in our deck, because there are three main plays to this deck, so either you start with Muta Generator, especially in round one, very, very powerful card, where you just boost everything in your deck constantly. There's also Raffert's Vengeance, um, where you um, use Raffert's Vengeance to get some tempo going. Uh, would also work very well with Muta Generator, but right now we don't really have an option for that. So let's just do Muta Generator first. Um, then we have the Istred Snowdrop combo, where you just draw a lot of cards, a few round, um, turns where you draw a lot of cards and generate a lot of points from that. Um, and then next up we have, I think that's four options then, but the first one is just um, set up for later. Uh, but next up we could also go for um, the final play, which is using Cohen with the Priestesses. We have, haven't actually seen a single Priestess just yet, which is annoying. Um, but I guess we'll see. So what is gonna happen, I'm gonna play a bronze card in the, um, the, the back row here. I'm gonna first use Amphibious Assault, by the way. Um, I'm gonna use that on Dandelion, because um, Dandelion is a pretty good uh, card. I'm gonna put him on the front row, which will boost himself because of um, the Mutated Generator. I'm gonna also Crystal Skull him, um, and I think I don't really need to zeal him then in that case. Um, he's going to be too big um, to zeal. So this also means that we can see... Yeah, Donomir is the card on top of my deck right now. And then we get K here. Hmm. K here in the front row, but that's not what we're after, actually. Our opponent thinks we're going to boost a lot, but that's not really what I want to do. Um, I'm going to put the Sentrian Envoy in the back first. So that is also for Provision Bronze, and then you can see the effect the Muta Generator going over there. Dandelion uh, can be tapped, and you also should go for Cohen with the boosts. So K here immediately. I should have kept... Um... Oh, K here is defended now. Okay. Weird, but okay, I guess. Um, I am going to put the Tridem Infantry unit in the back now. And now that's going to boost some more cards, and then we can put a card of our choice on top. Cohen on top, which means that at the end of every turn he will be boosted by one. Very, very good indeed. And then we have Jan Calvate. So he's sorting, they're sorting their deck in the correct order now. Um, there's not a lot of options for me right now. I don't have a lot of card drawing cards here. Uh, aside from Snowdrop, of course. 
I'm gonna put the Kedweni Sergeant in the back here, which will boost him, but also K here. Uh, but I need to get them in the back, uh, just because of those boosts. Um, and then tap Dandelion again. I should probably not go for Cohen again, because that would be a bit too much. Um, but I'm going for Raffert's Vengeance. Uh, you can also see that in the deck, how powerful that is starting to stack. So there's a lot of uh, cards right now that have extra boosts. Uh, so we don't even necessarily need to win this first round. Um, we get for cart into the Imperial Diplomacy, which will give them something. Yeah, another... Wow. A Griffin Witcher Adapt, so that's just four points. And we got, yeah, Thursday Dame got a, a point because of the spying tag that was applied. I should probably pass, but I'm a stubborn bastard. Um, I am 12, 12 points behind, but the longer I pull this, the more boosts I get in the deck. And I am willing to actually sacrifice Sunset Wanderers to get this going as well. So if we just put another Tridem Infantry unit, we get that over there. And I know I'm generating extra points for our opponent right now. Uh, but if I'm lucky, they actually go onto something else and we get some benefit from that. And Istret needs to be on top, so that is really good. We get more and more boosts in the deck. And not that far behind, because even with... Is Surrender enough? Surrender is not enough. Um, but Surrender is probably going to be the best option. Because I'm going to pull another card. Um, and I don't actually mind being in uh, a card down in the final round here. Uh, so I'm just putting Surrender on the back row, and then I'll get my Sunset Wanderers and I'll win this round, just by virtue of that. Uh, so Isret is now at the top. My cards are very high in general, uh, so I'm just going to put those two points on Cohen, which puts him to 9, although 7 is really nice at the moment. I'll just put them on the, yeah, the Griffin Witcher Mentor here. That's fine. So we get that, we get another card, and that's Istred. And now we can just pass. So one card down, but not the end of the world. I've won with this deck uh, even being two cards down before, um, just because of how powerful it is. Now, we're playing Nilf cards, so that could be problematic, but we do have like basically our best cards on top here. Um, the only card that I would really like to see is another Priestess, and... For that, I would have to kick Amphibious Assault. I could kick Istred, actually. Let's kick Istred and kick Erden. Now we get a get any Knights, okay, that's fine. I need to use all my mulligans when I play this deck, just to get the possibility of getting a Priestess. And now we get a simple Mage Torture and a pass, I'm assuming. There we go. All right, all right. Not the worst thing in the world, but I need to get some luck with my mulligans, because this has been atrocious up until now. Please give me a Priestess. There we go, at least one. Uh, so I need to kick the Priestess first. And then I can kick the Kedwini Knights. And we get a Priestess in hand, which is also good. We can definitely mulligan that away uh, at some point. We did not get uh, Istred back. And no Witcher Mentor either. They all look at those good cards in my deck still. So Raffert's Vengeance would be nice if you can pull that, but it's gonna be close, and we don't have Istred. So I could go for Istred with Amphibious Assault, but I think Donomir needs to go down first just to have a bit of defense. They could probably purify that away, but at least I get a start. So Joachim... Wow! Wow! How lucky can you be? That is insane. Okay. Um, fair enough, I guess. I could put some Redanian Knights down. Um, they will just start ticking up. Um, and they're high enough to actually do something now. And they could become nice targets for Cohen as well. So, not bad, not bad. There we get a Duchess Informant. Onto a Redanian Knight. I'm going to just put another one down. And then we can start um, Snow Dropping. Yeah, snow dropping is a word. Snow dropping is snow dropping is fun. Uh, that means that I can kick that priestess immediately. Um, so snow drop now, and then I can draw. Oh, efforts! Yes, okay, that's really good. Now I need to be careful because normally I should say get the priestess out, but with efforts we can play them. But let's just get them out. Yeah, there's no other option. I need to get rid of the ranger as well. 
Um, so that is that. So if that survives, we're going to get another two points because of Rafford's. Because I can play Rafford's... Uh, this is a soldier, right? Yeah. I can play Rafford's in the front. Um, and then immediately use the uh, ability. We get another Purify, but that's not going to work out really well. I'm almost sad that I didn't get Urden now, because that's going to be a big Urden. Yeah, let's just do Rafford's Vengeance. Zeal that. Use the ability, grab Radovitz Royal Guards, and we get the Priestess back, which is also really good. And then put the Radovitz Royal Guards over here. And I'm going to keep that boost in hand. The Priestess, is that the one with three charges? So we do have the other one over here. I could try, now that I have a single Priestess in hand, I could try to get Istred out. There we have Istred. <laughs> oh, if only I could grab that card. No, okay. I'm gonna put Istred on the board. Um, I think it's the best option, because this is, this is really good as well, though. Is Istred gonna be as good? I don't think it is. As the Priestess. The Priestess is 10 points, but I can... Um, just spread that around so much that it works for me later on. Let's go with the save bat first and put Erland down. Uh, Erland needs to boost as much as possible in the deck anyway, and I'll get those boosts in a minute. So let's do that. Still two points on those guys. And then we get Masquerade Ball, so that's going to be a lot of poison. Get a few locks going as well. Um, I need to put the Redanian Knights to equal. Um, do I pull another card? I don't think I will. Yeah, because I'm going to end with one card at one turn, so I'm not going to get Raffords again. Yeah, let's put Traveling Priestess down. Um, and put like a bunch of cards to nine. I'll put these to nine just to see if that works out. We can always go higher if we want to later on. Because the poison is going to come in and I do want to avoid getting hit with stuff like over there. Uh, I think 10 is probably going to be better and I have 3 more charges. Even 11 maybe. I guess we'll see what, what happens here. He's still waiting on using um, their Masquerade Ball charges. This is going to be tight. Um, so 2 more poison hits. Unless there's Urden in there but I'm guessing they still have the option to use twice. Um, the uh, the leader charges, um, uh, not the, the two aristocrats, they're gonna play two aristocrats, that's what I wanted to say, wow, words. Um, let's do Amphibious Assault on the Traveling Priestess, she's gonna be huge, yeah, 13. Um, gonna put her here, and that's three charges, now I need to pay attention. Um, I think 11 is probably gonna be better, so that means I need to put two... On Snowdrop. Oh no, I need I need a 10. I should have kept one charge, yeah, okay. Should have kept one charge, I'm kind of miscounted there. I should have kept one charge on um, the Priestess so I could... Because uh, the Priestesses have fail, I keep forgetting about that. Um, so I have... Oof, this is really bad now. I could go to 12. Because uh, they're going to go for the highest card, which is one of the yeah, the ones in the back. And they're locking that one, which is good. They're locking that one, which is good. Um, so now I need to get... I'm going to get Cohen up to 12. Um, I'm checking Erland as well. Erland is 17, yeah. Um, so... 12 on Cohen, and then 12 on Rafford's Vengeance as well. So that gives me 9 points, 18 extra points. <laughs> so that's a lot, but there's going to be another poisoning coming. Yeah, but it's one poison. It's not going to be enough. I think we got this. It's probably Vincent van Morleham, so that's 21... Uh, but they need to do 39 points. Ooh, that's going to be really close. Because they're going to get... Yeah, an extra point there. It's going to be really close. Oh, it's Thirsty Dame. Never mind, it's done. It's done. Yeah, they can get over that. 
There we go. Ooh, wow, that was really... Oh, yeah, because that is, that is a simulate. I forgot about that. Holy crap, that was close. I did um, completely misplay those charges. I could have done better with that. Uh, if I put a lot more units up to 10, then I could have boosted them up to 12 later on. So that was whew, really close. And we play Skellige, Blaze of Glory. I think Blaze of Glory is a little bit more doable, but again, Skellige is a really hard matchup. Um, we do start on red coin with Muta Generator, so that is always pretty good. I'm gonna get rid of Surrender. Trying to get, yeah, Cohen always needs to be in the deck as well. Let me get Amphibious Assault, which is not too bad. Um, that's four, four Provision Bronzes that we can use. That is gonna be good. We'll be able to fill the, the, um, the deck rather nicely. Because um, Erland can become really big. As you saw in the previous match, that was a 17-point Erland. I've seen him go up to 25 during testing. Um, but it can be a lot. Uh, just a lot in general. Um, I think the play is going to be pretty similar. So we're going with Muta Generator first. And then into Dandelion. Um, the only problem is going to be that we're, our bronzes are pretty far to the right. So with Sunset Wanderers that might be an issue, but we still have a few cards to actually draw cards. If I need to, I can always play Snowdrop a bit earlier. Uh, but there are the Highland Warriors, so they increase the value of their raid cards pretty, pretty effectively. So, first up, um, Dandelion. And again, we haven't seen any Priestesses during the Mulligan phase, which is annoying. Uh, so he gets boosted, also gets zealed. And we then tap him and put the boosts on Going. So all preparation for later on, it's very important to get that going as soon as possible. I don't think they can kill him yet. I don't think they can. So yeah, that's going to be two points, but it's not going to be enough. Um, next up is the Kedweni Sergeant. I'll just use that and that puts a lot of boosts in my deck. I love that animation. I do love that animation. I think they have what it takes to kill Dandelion now, uh, which is fine. I should also be on track to put my bronzes out correctly now. Uh, Dandelion got four points in the deck, which is not super, but it's uh, it's a good start. There we go. Could have been better, but not that big of an issue. Um, Redania Knight, I'll put... I don't have another option here to put the boosts on, so... Might as well do it here before we lose the sergeant. Uh, we got a stunning blow, which is also uh, overkill. So that's also important for Bran later on. Um, I could do Radovitz Royal Guards now. Like this, uh, giving us... I think that's all of the ones that we actually wanted to use, yeah. And we got a veteran there, which is... Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to waste Sunset Wanderers now. So we'll just stick to that. Uh, usually you will lose round one unless you get Raffords. Uh, Raffords Vengeance is really handy to get in the first round, but uh, I'm always happy if I see a Muta Generator in the first round. And there we have Raffords. There we have Raffords, which is basically... A, I would say perfect, but very good hand at the very least. I don't think... I, I do always need to use my Mulligans, which is the sad part. Um, I'm gonna even kick Istred out for now and just see Mulligan wise. We got a single Priestess. Okay, um, I'm gonna shuffle the Priestess back in with the Witcher Mentor. I'm not gonna use his Adrenaline ability, obviously, uh, but it's gonna be really handy to just do that. Oh, we get the other Priestess. That is fine. I need to remove the card on the left so that gives Sunset Wanderers an extra turn, so that is Perfectly fine. So 7-7 seven, seven, going into the final round, which is actually an ideal situation. And we have all our gold cards in hand and two priestesses with three charges. Maybe six in a minute, depending on if we draw her again now. No, we're not that lucky. Uh, but Mulligan, again, priestesses is always a Mulligan. Griffin Witcher Ranger against Blaze of Glory is not going to be that interesting. Um, during Mulligan phase, by the way, the cards always come to the right. So even if you remove one over here, they just swap them out. Um, it's not like when you draw cards, so you don't get any benefit of going for the left cards uh, from Sunset Wonders. We do need a, l a few provision, low provision bronzes, but that is absolutely fine. Okay. 
Okay, I'm not gonna use Donimir just yet. Uh, I don't need to. Um, I'm gonna keep that shield for later. So I'm just gonna use Raffert's Vengeance. Um, use Zeal again. Again, Raffert's and Dandelion are Zeal cards. And then we are not going for the Redanian Knight, we're going for the Tridem Infantry Unit. Just, ooh, that is really good. We get a Priestess there, and that one now has... It's going to have six charges if we put her correctly in a minute. The ideal combo with this is... Do I put down the Defender already? I'm going to try. The Defender is going to come into its own mostly... Um, to protect the Isred and Snowdrop combo. So if you put Donimir over here, we get a soldier right next to Raffert's Vengeance, which is good. And I don't think they can kill it in one go, unless they tag it with something and then use the leader ability. Which is also definitely an option. But if they use the leader ability, they're always going to go for um, Aced as well. We do get rain. We do get a little bit of rain. Uh, but that one turn was enough for me. Um, because I am going to put Istred down now. Uh, so you, if you can put him behind the defender, you put Istred down first and then Snowdrop, because that's the most effective way of doing that. So now Donimir can be killed with Blaze of Glory and then Istred maybe with something else, which is probably more than a maybe. Yeah, Stunning Blow is just enough. Are they going to use Blaze of Glory now? No, they're not. Okay, that's, that is superb. That is more than I could have bargained for. So, Snowdrop first, uh, we're going to draw two cards with Snowdrop, and we get the Priestesses again. Okay, that's really good. So, tag the two Priestesses, put them back in, uh, and then I'm checking. We still have two ways of drawing cards and Amphibious Assault. If we draw them again, no. Okay. Get 20 Knights and... Oof. I'm going to keep the Mentor, and Sentry and Envoy can go back as well. Erden, do we need Erden? I don't think so. I'm gonna get rid of Erden as well. There we go. Pretty good, pretty good. So Snowdrop is at 10 now. And she's gonna go up higher. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I can discard one more card. And I'm only gonna be able to use Raffert's Vengeance one more time. So... Instead of using the Griffin Witcher Mentor, which would give me an extra point for Sunset Wanderers, uh, I'm just going to put the Redanian Knight right next to uh, Raffert's Vengeance, which gives us another two points. Um, and a bit of an engine card that they, again, need to remove if they want to. And we get an extra draw, and that's going. Ooh, that's really good. That is really good, and I think we have one with... Oh, it's six charges. Six charges. I'm already counting for my charges. Ah, and there goes Raffert's. Into Harold. Is he gonna go for another Highland Warrior? Could go. No, the Uncreated Raiders. Fine. That is absolutely fine. We're getting up to 212s now. Centrion Envoy first. I can guarantee a certain card on top of my deck now. And it is the Traveling Priestess. Definitely doing that. So that means that. Ah, uh, it doesn't really matter. Because I'm not gonna. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna use the Griffin Witcher Mentor that way. So it's fine. So are they going to hit that or not? The Redanian Knight could be a nice target. Still a leader ability as well, but there's a huge amount of boost in our deck right now. Although not much remains, we do need it that setup heavily. It's going to come down to the wire. We've seen a lot of their big cards already, but don't underestimate that leader ability. We're going to be seeing Aced with that leader ability, which is a huge swing in this case. It's going to be about 25 points. And we get the Redanian Knight getting hit, and no Blaze of Glory just yet. Okay. Um, since Snowdrop is still alive, this is now the best option. So I'm going to draw a card and ooh, put it back regardless. That is actually good. I'm going to get 9 charges on that one. And it's up to 9 points now as well. Interesting, very interesting. I'm gonna have to calculate how far I can get going. Because I think it's only gonna be eight. Primal Savagery on the Envoy. Uh, and of course we knew what which card that we're gonna pull, that was fine. Um, 
Erland has immunity, which should make him survive whatever comes our way. Uh, I am going to put him over here, just in case there's a reset coming. Uh, so that's another bunch of boosts in the deck. And I should probably not tag him until the very end. There's King Bran, 12 points. Very juicy. So the Priestess with 9 charges is at 11 points. There's going to be another 5 on top of that. So we don't want that. Ideally... I'm going to leave a single charge. Oh boy, this is going to be annoying. So what I need to do... Oh, wait, 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 crap. Ah, uh, I put her too high. No, 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 I want to cancel. Crap, okay, I can't cancel. Um, so going for this Traveling Priestess, which is going to be a humongous card now. 16 points, 9 charges. I'm going to be able to put... They're not going to kill her, are they? Uh, so one... Two, three, four, five, six. Eight is going to be the most effective way, I think. Like this. It's not perfect. But I have multiple eights now. Uh, so I'm going to put Cohen over here. Give him the inspired zeal charge and then tap him which is another 10 points and then Erland on top of that is again 17 that was the exact same thing we lose five points over there but ace is is that gonna make the swing they don't get an extra card so i don't think that's enough that's 24 points that is not gonna be enough there we go not enough oh boy that was sweet that was a really cool match. Yeah, look at our board with just 7 units, 74 points. Um, yeah, ideally I think I would have swapped um, first using Erland and then putting the Priestess at. Maybe I could have gotten an extra point if I put everything to 9, but it would have been very risky. Uh, so yeah, GG. And for our final match we're facing Monsters. Monsters could be interesting. It's that wish. If we start, we get the Muta Generator again, so we definitely can work our magic here. Uh, four provision, four, four bronzes. I'll, I should just keep it like that, four bronzes. Erden is going to come in handy, but I don't, it's, it's too early to have him play here. Um, and then the Tridem Infantry unit, not too powerful, but it's going to be, going to have to do. Um, do I kick something else? I'm going to keep to my bronzes, although Istred is nice. I'll kick Donimir, and we get a Griffin with your Ranger. Okay, so same thing. Meet the generator first, and then just start boosting, start boosting away. And I think this time we don't have Amphibious Assault, so Dandelion is not an option. Uh, but Dandelion is, is just as good in the uh, the next rounds. Um, Rafford's Vengeance is gonna come in handy by putting it in the front. Which gives it an extra point because of Muta Generator, then Inspire Zealot and start uh, whacking down those other units. Um, how are they positioned? I should probably get either the Tridem Infantry Unit or Radovitz Royal Guards. Um, let's put Radovitz Royal Guards down first and we get Erden back. So that is fine. And we get a bunch of boosts in the deck. Still loving that animation. And then we get an Archispore, so our opponent is low-balling. Um, I'm assuming if... Because if they pass at 7, then I'm just going to keep going. The more bronzes that I can play at this point, the more boosts I'm going to get in my deck. And the crazier that the combo is going to be at the very end, so... I'm not scared of this thing now. Opponent is really playing low. And I think they just realized what that does. Because they checked it. And we get the Mushy Truffle, giving them carryover. Interesting. But this is way too early for carryovers, because I'm going to aim to win this round. Um, I'm going to put the Redanian Knight down, giving us another engine. Um, not the best, of course, but since you're an envoy, it gives us... Ooh, that's a tough decision. I think ideally Amphibious Assault, to put that on top. Um, and I might even be tempted to use Istred in a minute as well. Because I think they might be thinking now, ooh, I can pulse, yeah, okay. 
You cannot pass at this point, buddy. You shouldn't have passed at this point, because I'm just going to keep going. Um, I can put the Tritum Infantry unit down here. Another boost in the deck, and I can do that one more time. Uh, I can also give the Crystal Skull to this guy, and then just because uh, that's going to tick once. And this is also going to tick once, so there we go. Sadly, not going to be able to use Raffords again. I'm going to keep the Griffin Witcher Ranger, because he's five provisions, not four. So another Redanian Knight, um, and then tap the Sentry and Envoy, and we got Cohen up top. I'm going to put the Mentor up top. Um, there we go. And I could push it even further, but that would be preposterous of me. So that's first round one with a lot of setups. So that was five, uh, four provision bronzes. So that's 25 points of carryover. Really, really good. Amphibious Assault was guaranteed. Dolomir not, but not that much of a problem. I can get rid of the Griffin with your mentor. And then of course the Traveling Priestess again. We need to tap those away. Look at those bronzes. They're just huge at the moment. So I need to pass. And going into a pass round and that Mushy Truffle is now useless. So idea for me would be to keep the um, the defender for later on. So once we get our really important pieces going, I still need a couple of cards, but we do have Istrat. Ooh, is that that big priestess? It is not. Okay, this, so this is not the big priestess. Um, we do get Cohen, but Cohen is really low at the moment. I'm gonna kick the ranger, and we get Snowdrop. Yeah, basically ideal. Um, I'm not even gonna... Yeah, Erland would be nice. So we have six charges and three charges. Erland would be nice, but I guess we might not see him. Unless, of course, we can get him with uh, Istred. Uh, so this should be fine. We still have a couple of bronzes that we can kick out of the deck. We still have Amphibious Assault, which was guaranteed. And we can grab any other card later on. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of those other bronzes, though. Uh, we do get a single extra free card in a minute because of Sunset Wonders, and we get the Frightener. The Frightener. Yeah, Sunset Wonders wise, this is a bit weird, but I'm gonna put Dandelion down. It's just gonna be better. We might get Predator, he dived here. Um, but still, it's gonna be the better option. Um, Erland or not Erland? I'll just, I'll just boost whatever. It doesn't really matter that we boost Erland. Uh, so this could get predatory dived. We get a lock instead. Interesting. Interesting. I'm hesitant to use the defender already, but I'm going to. I'm going to put defender down because um, I need to start putting his threats up. want to see how far I can push this. They did kick their purify away. And there's Haunt. Okay. So that means I do have a free uh, Istred play here. So I can put Istred down, Snowdrop later on, and then next up we'll also be getting Sunset Wanderers automatically. So that maximizes the Snowdrop potential. Uh, and we can kick those two bronzes. Those points are hopefully going into Erland. Um, Rot Fiend is only five, so Istred is gonna survive if he gets hit. Wow! Wow, you got really lucky there. Okay, um, so let's put Snowdrop down as well, also behind the Defender. Uh, drawing two more cards and we get another Priestess. Is that? No, it's not the big one. Uh, so we're going to be putting Priestess back and Surrender actually. Yeah, Surrender. So that puts Istred back up to two. I'm going to risk not using him. I'm gonna risk it. We get another unit with uh, Sunset Wonders and we get another draw. And it is a Mentor. Mentor is always useful. Harpy Egg into another Death Wish. That is fine. I'm gonna let them just play that out. I'm gonna put Trilem Infantry down. Next up we can use the Griffin Witcher Mentor. And then on Istred. Istred is a tree. That is annoying. But we'll get an extra card with Griffin with your mentor anyway. Um, yeah, so try them. Try them infantry going down. It's probably the better option at this point. We can draw another card with the Witcher Mentor. That can also go up front. I wonder if they have the potential. This could be very big on our side of the board. There's a lot of units that are pretty close clumped together, points-wise. Um, it's weird that they don't go for the Harpy Egg there, but 
Um, Griffin, which your mentor, will be drawing a card and then putting one back. And that is definitely one we will be putting back. Uh, Istred is at four. I'll wait one more turn. I'm going to use him next. And then we'll see how far we can get. Because um, I'm going to use him next. Swap the sergeant out for hopefully a priestess. Hopefully the big priestess. Oh no, the small priestess actually. Um, or not even. I can even swap him for Erland. Because Erland is going to have a lot of boosts. So yeah, Istred five times. So one that's the sixth charge. And that is the other sixth charge. So I get Erland. So I'm going to put this, this and this back. I need to put five back. Do I put both of them back? I think so. It's going to be the best option. There we go. So that's both of them at nine charges. Okay. Uh, and now I need to play a card, which is going to be Erland, because Erland just has the most passive ability of all, and he has immunity right now. So right now there's only seven cards in my deck, but I think those seven cards constitute like 20 or 30 points. You can't target that, so that's going to have to be... Yeah. I'm counting how far I can get with Cohen. So that's nine charges. I could probably put a bunch of units up to nine. Yeah, I think nine is going to be the way to go. So let's put Cohen down first. Yeah, let's put Cohen down first and see. Because it might actually be nine that's better. Because I can reset them all by using... Yeah, that's going to be the play. I'm going to use Erland first. Even though our opponent has the benefit here. I'm going to use Erland first. That is a 41 point Erland. Holy shit. Um, and then I'm going to use Amphibious Assault on either one of them. They both have nine charges. It's going to put them up to eight. Eight as well. Okay. So that is eight. I'm going to put her over here. So, oh, come on. I wanted to see how that was going to work. That was going to have, that's, that would put me over 150, I think. That was going to be really big. I was already at 105, and then the urn on top of that, yeah. Wow, that was a really, really big match. Sadly, it couldn't show off the total numbers, but you can imagine what that would have ended like. GG. And that was that. I mean, that showcased it really nicely. Now, it's really weird. So, the deck that you see now has been in my deck builder. I think 90% of this deck was in my deck builder already. I think the only changes that I made was adding Muta gen Generator and then of course the two Priestesses because they're so powerful. Um, but it's weird how that matched and, and just worked out with this deck. Uh, I also added Surrender, but that's just a, a minor change because of the, the, the Dwarves. We haven't actually seen any Dwarves now, which was interesting, uh, but still a pretty good card, just um, yeah, utility-wise. But other than that, I think the, the main flow is pretty clear. So if you can start with Muta Generator, definitely do so. Even if you lose that round with a card down, you can definitely still win. Just because of the huge amount of uh, carryover that you generate. <laughs> that 43 point Erland at the very end, that was a, that was a very nice one. Um, other than that, you have a few tempo plays with Raffert's Vengeance. Um, Dandelion is also good to get some carryover, even, that, even though that doesn't really give you any tempo. Um, and then Istred and Snowdrop, you can even drop in round one or round two if you want to just guarantee that first round. Um, they're really good in getting that tempo going because Snowdrop can also become pretty big as you saw in that final round. And then the final play is hopefully, if you can, Defender, Cohen, and then one or two Priestesses giving you uh, a bunch of equally sized units that Cohen can just boost to infinity. The one that we would have played here I think would have been about 40 extra points. Um, just because of Cohen alone. Um, and if you don't have Cohen, you can still use the charges of the Priestess on the Tridem Infantry, doubling them up even further. So um, there we go, the Draw Madness deck. And that was it for this episode. Uh, my deck builder is stacked to the brim with uh, decks that I've been trying out. Uh, so there's definitely going to be quite a few new episodes coming up in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for that. If you want to talk to me, um, if you have any suggestions for the, this deck or any other decks uh, to make it better, because that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. Uh, you can talk to me just in the comment section down below. Or on Twitter, you can find me it with uh, the handle at Trovinut, so T-R-O-V-N-U-T, and we can 
continue the discussion over there. So thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode or stream because I've been uh, streaming more regularly so you can find me on Twitch as well. Uh, the link is in uh, YouTube here as well. So uh, thank you guys again enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode or stream. Goodbye and stay nutty.